We're taking time this summer to track down the supporting players in our story, the Columbia Expedition, the first American voyage around the world. Starting with the investors, we learned that one of them, Samuel Brown, had some papers held here at the Boston Public Library. These aren't copies, they're originals from over 200 years ago. Problem is, they're just some bills and notes to Samuel Brown from a business partner for voyages he invested in nearly a decade after Columbia left Boston in 1787. So we've hit a dead end. As Matt and Jay were looking over these documents, I pulled a bibliography off a nearby shelf and looked up our time period, post-revolutionary war America. Listed was the first book to receive a copyright in the new United States penciled notation indicated the library actually had a copy here. So we checked it out. Seventeen eighty three. John Ledyard's journal. First edition. That's it. That's what started it all. John Ledyard was an American serving as a Royal Marine at Hawaii when explorer James Cook was murdered there in 1779. But Ledyard managed to get home to the United States and publish his account, and it caused a sensation. This is typical. We come in one place to find information about Samuel Brown. Instead, we pull something off the shelf that shows us an original document, the original first edition of uh, John Ledyard's journal. So uh, that leads us off to Connecticut. The uh, Ledyard family is very prominent in the uh, Groton, New London uh, area. John Ledyard was born on Broad Street, right here in Groton in November of 1751. His parents had uh, been first cousins who eloped uh, and were at a time almost disowned by their own families. There's always a tension there and that led later on to uh, some problems with uh, after his father would die. John Ledyard's mother and family was pretty much kicked out of their house in Groton and they uh, moved over to uh, Long Island, Southold, Long Island, where uh, his mother remarried a doctor. So he spent time over in Long Island and then later on came back to Connecticut. As a teenager, John was taken in by his wealthy grandfather in Hartford. But following his death, amongst the many grandchildren, John was given short shrift in the will. With what little money he had, in 1772, he attended Dartmouth College in New Hampshire. After a year of study, he dropped out by making himself a dugout canoe and paddling down the Connecticut River back down to Hartford. A month before the uh, Boston Tea Party, John Ledyard shipped off for his first voyage. He was just a regular able-bodied seaman, even though he'd gone to Dartmouth College and was pretty well educated. He left from here, New London, right across the river from uh, his home in Groton. And they uh, eventually brought him back with the ship via the West Indies back into New London. And the next time that Ledyard was back in New London was nine years later. In November of 1782, he had asked for permission to leave uh, the uh, ship he was on in Huntington Bay, uh, British-occupied Long Island. He was to go see his mother. So he walked the uh, 60 miles on to uh, Southold at the other end of Long Island. Immediately afterwards, Took off, um, deserted. He was uh, done with serving the British Marines, and he came back to Groton, back to his boyhood home. And what he found was a town that had suffered greatly from uh, a raid by the British, led by a newly minted British general, Benedict Arnold. Arnold's plan was to have a two-pronged attack, uh, to attack both sides of the river at once, but especially his, his first place to be able to take was this fort, Fort Griswold. It was on a commanding height over the entire uh, opening of the river and across from uh, New London. So the first man he was going to have to take out was Colonel William Ledyard, commander of the fort and John Ledyard's uncle. British brought in uh, Hessian troops, 
and uh, as well as uh, Americans who had gone over to the British side. Uh, they stormed right up this hill, came around, and were able to get inside the fort fairly quickly with the help of uh, some local spy. The Americans had managed to take out uh, the uh, two commanding officers of the British forces. But when they got inside, it took quite a while for both sides to stop fighting, even though there was a ceasefire arranged. When uh, uh, Colonel William Ledyard um, was approached by the, had, had given the surrender order and went up to uh, his uh, British counterpart, the uh, British officer said, who is in command here? And William Ledyard said, the Colonel said, uh, I was, but now you are, and he handed over his sword, and according to American accounts, the British officer ran him through with his own sword. Afterwards, there was reportedly a massacre of uh, scores of Americans, even though there had already been a surrender. So John Ledyard made his way back to Hartford, um, where he had uh, been a teenager uh, at his grandfather's house. From the safety of Hartford, he was able to write his accounts of his travels with James Cook and uh, present his business plan. You can see a pattern here. At 10, Ledyard's father dies and he's dispossessed. As a teenager, his grandfather dies and again, he's left on his own. In Hawaii, Cook is killed and the ships limp back to England. When he comes home, his uncle is dead and his hometown is in shambles. Throughout his life, he's been unable to form any lasting attachments despite a talent as a budding anthropologist and often comes off as haughty. Ledyard bounced around after this, trying to sell his plan of a new trade with China via the Northwest Coast. But while his idea was attractive, he didn't seem to be trusted to put it into action. Philadelphia, then New York and Boston, then to Spain and Paris in 1785, where he becomes fast friends with the American ambassador, Thomas Jefferson. But Ledyard's off to London in 1786, then by March of 1787, he's in St. Petersburg, Russia, and he's determined to cross Asia by land cross over to Alaska, then down to the northwest coast, then over the Rocky Mountains back to the east coast of the United States. By the time the ships of the Columbia Expedition were leaving Boston at the end of September of 1787, Ledyard was already in Siberia, 500 miles from the Pacific. If it were a race to the heart of Pacific trade, John Ledyard, our herald, seemed to be in the lead.